I discovered the Neo Air Uber Light, which is brand new. The fabric is ultra light and in Israeli conditions, I'm a little concerned that um, it's gonna get roughed up. So when you get into camp at night, you don't have to spend the next half hour blowing up your sleeping pad. <laughs> the Neo Air does not. You have to actually blow that up. But Thermarest has come up with this awesome solution. So you can actually blow up your sleeping pad without blowing it up. And it's called a Neo Air pump sack. And I ordered this with the, um, with the Uber Light. We're gonna go test it out at my, in my tent. Basically, I'm explaining that the wind is gonna blow me and the tent away. And I've just discovered that the windows are peeling off the fly. Well, that was disappointing, but with the uh, thunderstorm that they're promising for tonight, I just couldn't run the risk that, the, that it might rain through those holes in the windows. So I packed it all up, brought it back in, and we're going with plan B. Hey everyone, my name is Joe and I'm the Kosher Ninja. We're planning and preparing my bucket list adventure, which is to hike through Israel from one end to the other along the Israel National Trail or Shvil Israel later this year. I'm so glad you've stopped by and while you're here, I hope you'll subscribe. But right now, I have a promise to keep. Last time I promised I would give you the video from unboxing and testing out the Thermarest NeoAir Uber Light and the NeoAir pump sack that I bought. So that's what we're going to do today. So getting down to business, this is that sleeping pad, the uh, NeoRest NeoAir Uber Light, and it's tiny. It's just as tiny when you take it out of the box. Um, it's like I was concerned, the, the material is very thin. Um, so I am definitely concerned about, you know, different kind of thorns and plants and cactuses and stuff and rocks poking into it and poking holes. Um, we'll have to see. I, I'll have to pick my camp sleep spots very carefully. And it's a good thing I, brought, I got that ground sheet because that's gonna be important for this. Um, so it has the typical Thermarest um, blow, hole, blow vent here and um, that's how you would blow it up when you get to camp and I can't get this paper off. Okay, excuse me for a moment while I get this paper off. Warning risk of suffocation, yeah. Okay, so the paper's off. And there's, oh, all kinds of other paper in here. Oh, cool. There's a stuff sack, a very tiny stuff sack, which is very cool. There's a field repair kit. That's also good. I'm going to need that <laughs> for sure. And there's some kind of a user guide and warranty information. So that'll be interesting to read, but Anyway, so what you would do normally if you didn't have the pump kit is you take the, the vent here and you would just blow it up. But you know what? There's a couple of issues with that. One is I don't want the humidity from my air, from my lungs going in to my sleeping pad. And the other one is that is gonna take me forever. So, I'm going to test out this pump sack, which I forgot to tell you, doubles as a stool. So you, you use your sleeping pad, you fold it up and put it inside the, uh, the bag, and then you make sure that it's all blown up. And it doubles as a camp stool, which is pretty cool. So anyways, I'm gonna have to figure out how this works. 
apparently it works on the same principle if you've ever filled a bag with air. So you just open the bag up as wide as you can, let it fill with air, and then you close the end. Okay, that was not much air. <laughs> if this is how my this is going to work, then this is pretty sad. Anyways, there's a, there's a hole here which fits over the nozzle on the sleeping pad and you push the air out of the bag. So we're going to try this. Not sure if I can get this done so that you can see, but let's try. Okay. Oh, the hole is pretty small. I hope it stretches. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I think I'm going to have to look at the instructions. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. So I managed to get the, uh, the, the pump onto the nozzle and it's very tight, which is good. So presumably it shouldn't leak air, but it sits on the nozzle like that, if you can see. And uh, then we just let the bag fill with air. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> fill with air like, like that. And then we just push the air out of the bag. This is supposed to work. Okay, I can see it here. Oh, and I can see it going in. Well, this is much nicer than sitting and blowing my sleeping pad for the for the next half hour. All right, one down. Then we open it up again, fill it up with some more air. Okay, this is all all very interesting. Okay, you can see the uh, the sleeping pad is uh, filling up already. That's just two two bucketfuls of air. So this is really exciting. Um, this shouldn't take more than about five minutes to fill up my small sleeping pad, depending on once I get proficient at this. Look at that, three buckets of air, and um, or bags of air, I guess it would be in this case, and it's almost done. I think I'd like to top it up just a little bit. Um, and then I can always top it up with air, like by blowing in some air through the nozzle myself. Um, I just don't want to fill the whole thing with, for one, for one thing, work my lungs that hard, and for another thing, the, the possibility of moisture in, um, in my breath. So, then I'm going to close the nozzle. Uh-oh. Yeah, I guess I will have to top it up a little bit at the end because it's hard to it's hard to get it to the actual um, firmness that I like, and then close the nozzle. But uh, let's just see. Okay. All right, I took that off, and um, it's a little bit soft for my liking, so I'll probably top it up. With, um, with my own air from the nozzle. And this is definitely going to require patching in the wilderness for sure. Um, but it is supposed to be a durable fabric, like they have some kind of special weave or something. So it's supposed to, it's supposed to be a little bit tough. Let's hope so. So I'm pretty impressed with myself. I don't know if you've ever tried to deflate one of these sleeping pads any kind of an air mattress or whatever, it's impossible to get all the air out. But um, I managed to get this back to pretty small and certainly small enough that, oh, come on, and now it won't, now, it, now it's making me into a liar. Um, certainly small enough that I can get it to fit back into the, ah! <laughs> okay. It did, it did fit back into the stuff sack that it came with. So there, I can't get it in now. 
for you, for sure, of course not. But yeah, so it fit back into its stuff sack. That's really amazing. And the field repair kit will fit in there as well. And uh, that's really awesome. I'm looking forward to using it on the, on the Schwill. Okay, so that's a better view of how it hooks onto the nozzle. It's still, you still can't get a really super great view, but there's a sort of a rubbery plastic um, seam around the hole, and that's what stretches to go on over the nozzle. And um, I hope you can see that. So I hope you'll get a better view this time. Um, I know that last one, wasn't a great view, but I wanted, to, I really wanted to, you to get my first unadulterated experience with, um, with the pump sack. So I've included that. And now we're gonna try it and get a better view. So this is the, the pump sack. It's connected to the pad, like I just showed you. We're gonna let it fill with air. And I guess, eh, doesn't help. Okay, so we're gonna, let it fill with air like that like you would a bag that you wanted to make a pop sound with if you were a seven-year-old guy or girl okay this is probably kind of noisy on the microphone because it's rustly the fabric is not rustly but here you can hear the air going into the pad that's one bag worth then we're, we just, you just unroll it, open it up again, let it fill up with the air. And, well, that's, it's a simple thing, right? It's not the greatest, <laughs> most efficient principle on some level, I suppose. But, here you go. Oh, and it fell off. That's not good. Don't know how that happened. All right, let's try this again. For some reason, the, the little hole on the pump sack fell off of the nozzle. So I guess you kind of have to be careful about how you do this. But let's try and connect it again. That's easier. Works easier if you do it from inside the bag than outside, so okay. Now again, sorry for the noise of this. It's a little bit noisy, but uh, you get the idea. So you've, again, you bags in your way, sorry. So you fill the bag with air again. This is gonna be, that second one didn't count. So this is sack two. Okay. And one more time. Basically you just open it up and it fills with air by itself automatically, right? And then when you close it, Yeah, so the problem is more about keeping the air in once you've got it full up. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's it's still a little soft, I'd say, but probably once I, my weight, once I get on it, will probably be fine. As a matter of fact, I'm actually gonna try it right now and see see what it feels like to lie on. All right, let's see. Doesn't actually give me much more. Ugh, I'm scared to get on it because I'm scared it's like so thin. It's gonna pop. Ugh. Okay, so that's actually very comfortable. Um, yeah, very comfortable. It doesn't give me much room to move. Um, and it's, I'm a little bit scared if I move, it's going to pop. <laughs> so 
it'll be interesting to see what kind of sleep I get on this. But um, it gives me basically coverage from my head to just above my knees. And um, that should be all I need, really. It is narrow. So for those of you who are somewhat bigger or if you toss and turn a lot at night, um, you probably would want, well, you definitely want a larger size. I think the larger sizes are a little bit wider, um, so they may help, but you still might find them a little bit narrow for your liking. But if you're mostly concerned about the fact that it's lightweight and um, easy to carry, then this is great. All right, so I thought we were done with that, but apparently we're not. It turns out Dixie is actually out on the trail right now with her mom, filling in her fire closures on the PCT. And they had some trouble with their Uber light on the very first night out, and both woke up with flat pads. So basically, I'm going to have to test it out in real world conditions. I'm going to sleep on it tonight. You can see it's, um, I've blown it up here, inflated it behind me along with the, uh, the Sea to Summit Arrows pillow. And um, I'm gonna try to sleep on that tonight and see if it uh, holds out or if it's flat because quite honestly, if it can't hold out here on top of my real air mattress, I can't see how it's gonna hold out on the Schwiel. So we're gonna test that tonight and I will see you in the morning. Nothing quite like being like woken up by the birds at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, but the sleeping pad seems to have held up okay. Um, it was really kind of awkward to sleep on because it's it is very narrow. But I did manage to even like toss and turn a couple times, turn onto my side and then back, and then onto the other side and back. So um, it, awkwardly true um difficultly but i did so it's possible and it seems to now granted this is totally ideal circumstances i have it laid up on top of my as you can see on top of my real air mattress um so i don't know how it's going to hold out actually on the trail but it seems that dixie must have caught a couple of duds and i hope she uh, I hope I hope she gets that worked out but so far this is okay um, and it's otherwise quite comfortable to sleep on I suppose but it is narrow um, so I don't know we'll have we'll just have to check it out on the trail and hope that hope that it stays true stays strong now I'm gonna try and get some sleep again because I'm not ready to get up. So if you're as excited as I am about my adventure, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you have any questions or comments about my sleeping pad or the pump sack, you can leave those in the comments down below. As always, if you've ever hiked the Shvil Israel or anywhere else in Israel, I would love to hear from you. I'm so excited to be sharing this journey with you and I can't wait to see you again next time. Until then, thanks for watching and shalom, eh? Uh, I have water on my chin and a mosquito eating me in the back. Okay. And then I get a car. Really? Car again, really? Um, airplane. dogs and <laughs> loading a pickup truck. <sighs> ah, okay.